I'd like to welcome you all out to the services for Ronald David Cantera. Prior to the services, we had uh, a family prayer that was offered by David Cantera. And we thank Cassidy Atwood for pro providing the prelude music. We're going to begin with an opening song, There is Sunshine in My Soul Today, and that will be followed by the invocation offered by Julie Cantera. And we'll go to that point in our program. Sorrow. 
So I have some notes about themes that come that I think of when I think of my dad. <coughs> Sorry. And I think we all know what theme number one is. <laughs> sports. Right? And obviously dad was sports played a huge part in his life, but before I talk about that, I want the dad was into sports for the sake of, of us, his kids and his grandkids. I remember he would plan trips down to see us when Ben had a soccer game or Ellie was playing basketball or it, like he he didn't just love sports for statistics and for records and for most goals ever scored in a hockey game sort of thing. He loved sports because it, it brought us together as family. We remember all the times we'd go to the YMCA and just go swimming. Dad at the lake, he'd just swim laps back and forth between like just all the all the movement and, and motion. It was really important and it, it, it brought us together and it's why grandpa loved visiting you kids and he couldn't get enough of your sports, whether baseball games or I could have swore somebody played softball along the line, but apparently not. <laughs> so sports. Sports sports to dad was not your grandpa to rock. It wasn't just uh, the Red Wings and the Lions and the Tigers. It was his kids, and he wanted his kids to be healthy and happy, and and so sports was important for that. But sports was also very important. My, I I learned the game of baseball sitting and watching games with my dad. Baseball, it's a very artful game, and I learned to love it sitting and watching games with my dad. I think my kids. Did the same. At once the Red Sox finally won, I think it was less stressful. But so that's something that I got from my dad. Uh, some of my best memories as a kid, my dad, in case you guys don't know, when we lived in Fresno, California for a couple of years, one of his jobs, one of his many jobs, was as the, the Saturday night sports uh, anchor. So he gave the sports on the news at night. And I would spend all day Saturday with him at the studio at KMJ in Fresno, and I would just tally up college football scores. And then at the, during the sports cast, all those scores I had tallied would run across the bottom of the screen while my dad was giving the... So that's a great memory. <clears throat> I have uh, memories of when dad would do the, the color and then the radio calling show for Bruins game, Boston Bruins game at the old Boston Garden. Every so often, we got to go along sit in the press box and I remember drinking seven up and sitting in the press box while the Bruins played in the old Boston Garden. Some of the best teams Bruins ever put on the ice. So you can tell the sports thing rubbed off a little bit on me. And I could go on and on, but I, I won't. I do want to just say one thing. First of all, my dad loved the Detroit Lions. He would talk about the Lions as what they were in the 1950s and early 60s, they were the best team in football. Greatest team, all these championships. And then in the modern era, my dad never got to see his beloved Lions make it to a Super Bowl. And Ben will be saying this about me when I die. <laughs> There's another thing, I'm gonna get off sports, but I do have one last thing, and it has to do with baseball, because it's been really bittersweet for me <clears throat> to lose that during a time when baseball is locked down. We didn't even get a season. So I, it's bittersweet because on the one hand, it's a good thing because if we were playing baseball right now, Dad's Tigers would be in the last place in the AL Central <laughs> by now, because it'd be a month or so into the season. <laughs> but it's bitter, it's hard, it's gonna be hard when that first pitch is finally thrown and to know that baseball's back, but Dad won't be around to see it. If his tights are in the World Series, <laughs> maybe he'll come back for that. <laughs> okay, my second theme is humor. As, as a master dad joker myself, my kids can attest, I'm a master of the pun. And you know, the typical dad joke pun. Hi, I'm hungry. Oh, nice to meet you, hungry, I'm wrong. That was the typical. The nice thing about the perfect dad joke, though, is spontaneous, 
but yet yeah, draws on tradition. Um, and I think Dad had both of those down. Some of the things that I think of when I think of Dad being Dad is, is trips to S Lake where we drive past the Dairy Queen and Dad would do this with the steering wheel like he couldn't control the car. It was pulling him into the Dairy Queen parking lot. Help me kids, I can't control the car. Every year, it became a tradition, right? That Dad would do that. And we'd all go in and we'd get our, those. What is it? Uh, the ice cream cone with the chocolate, dipped in chocolate. Yeah, and then we'd get back in the car and it'd be melting all over the car and Dad would say, hand me that. And he'd lick it clean for you to make sure it's not dripping and then give it back to you. Well, and then eventually, you know, by the time I turned 18 or 19, I could handle my own. <laughs> there was the other, and <clears throat> obviously a lot of the memories I have of, of us, our family and of dad <clears throat> have to do with S. Lake. And I'm thinking back to a a wonderful year for movies, 1977, because that's the year Star Wars and New Hope came out, of course. It's also the year that Close Encounters of the Third Kind came out. And if anyone was there in Hillman, and, and by the way, the way we did S. Lake back in the day was, us boys would, would go, we'd spend a, a little time in Warren, right? A, couple of, a month or so in Warren, while the girls were up at the lake. And then, yeah, and then we'd swap off, and then mom and dad would come, and we'd all be at the lake together. Yes, trust me, this is how it was. At least, one, at least in 1977. And so then, and when we were all there, including the cousins, and both, everyone from uh, both Luces and Canteras, we went into Hillman to see a movie. Anyone remember this? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and we saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And it's a, you know, I was young. I was, what was I in '77? I was, I was eight years old. Yeah. So and yeah, and, and in the movie, there's a, a UFO tracing this car, and the guy's trying to figure it out, and his lights are flashing on and off, and it's really spooky. <laughs> Anyways, and the trip between Hillman and the lake goes through all these unlit areas. You're in the wilderness. And so Tad would like turn off all the lights in the car and flash them like we were being chased by alien. And it was actually really intense for an eight-year-old kid. I mean, fun, like a roller coaster is intense. But that to me epitomizes Dad's ability to, to seize the moment and make a good dad joke. That really sticks with you. It stuck with me my whole life. So Dad had a lot of great humor. My third theme. It's something that maybe we don't think of exactly when we think of Dad, but it really, really applies, and that was his love of nature and of just the beauty of the world. Dad called it the beauty of creation, the joy of creation. You know, he he appreciated, sorry, he, he, he appreciated a, a beautiful sunset. He appreciated the Grand Canyon, a mountain range, S Lake. So he loved nature even though we, we don't really think of him as like an outdoorsy guy. He used to take us camping, you know, when we were kids, and we'd always, he always had a deep appreciation, I think, of the beauty of the world. And so I wanted to remember that as well. And I also want to remember the time at S. Lake where he'd been swimming underwater, and I, I saw this at like, vividly, and he came up from underwater and took a deep breath, like you do when you're been underwater, and inhaled a big horse fly about this big. <laughs> and didn't recover for the whole rest of the day. <laughs> so I don't know how much he loved nature in that moment. <laughs> Finally, um, and I know I'm going long, but the last thing I think of is Dad's legacy. And Dad's legacy is what I'm looking at here, and hopefully some people on Zoom are following. It's you guys. Us kids, his kids, but his grandkids. He would be so pleased to be looking out at what I'm looking out at right now. His, his legacy, his, the people who carry it on. And so the last thing I want to say is because you, you all are, are what's left of my dad in this mortal world at least. And he loved you all so much. Family was everything to him. 
right? We all, we all know Dad, but we all know how much he loved so deeply his family, and how much he wanted all of you to be happy, and to just achieve your dreams. Whatever you guys want to do, you can do it. And Dad, Ron, Grandpa, he wants you to. And the best leg is the, we've come here to remember my dad's life, to remember who he was, and, but the best thing for us to remember is it's up to us to carry that forward. And for Dad, because he wanted it for you, he wanted each and every one of you to be happy and to achieve as much as you can possibly achieve. Go realize your dreams. And that's what I think Dad would want. Ron, your grandpa. I love my dad very much. We didn't see eye to eye on everything, by the way. <laughs> when you ran away. <laughs> like when I ran away. <laughs> my dad was a, Re a proud Reagan Republican. I'm a proud FDR Democrat. That's too bad. <laughs> but I loved him very much. Loved him with all my heart. And I always will. Thank you, Dad. I miss you.
dad both used to sing to us, but it drove me crazy. I hated when he would wake me up like that, but now I think it's a fun memory to, to reflect on. Um, I think dad was probably the most organized person I've ever met, if, and maybe over the top organized, if that's a thing. Um, and we've been reminded of that again this week as we've gone through his stuff. Um, but as a teenager, he definitely, I did not take after him in that regard, I guess. He never thought my room was clean and organized, and he tried to implement many different little programs <laughs> to try to help me uh, be more like him in that way. Um, and I don't know if it ever stuck as a teenager, but as an adult, I remember every time he would come stay with me or come visit me, he would comment on how clean my house was. Because <laughs> he, he would say, I never expected you to be so tidy and clean. <laughs> and so, but it never went without notice. He always, always commented, always commented on it. Um, uh, and Dad had a love of music, a love for music, like really no one else I've ever known. Um, and he had a special song for each of us three girls. And um, they were songs that were written about our names. Um, and he would uh, sing them to us often. And I remember feeling like it was so special because it felt like the song was just written just for me. Um, but last night, Katie and I found all three songs on YouTube and we listened to them. And it was really cool. When I heard my song, it just brought back so many memories. and tears came and but it was it was actually a really neat memory um, and dad's love of music was a constant through his entire life um, I think culminating in his achievement of being able to sing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir um, that time was something he would cherish for years to come and I think he would say it was one of his favorite memories um, I thought a lot this week about maybe like what's the most important lesson um, that I learned from him and I came to the conclusion that it was actually the most important choice we made, which impacted ourselves and countless other lives. Um, in October of 1973, Dad chose to be baptized as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And because of this choice, he raised his family with the opportunity to learn important etern and eternal principles that will allow us to be together forever as a family. Um, for me, I'm grateful for his persistence in studying about the gospel and choosing to be, back, to be baptized. Um, it provided me the opportunity to come to develop my own relationship with my Savior. And having the gospel as a part of my life is my greatest blessing, and I'm so grateful that he led the way for our family. Um, so over the last eight months, I had the opportunity to spend more time with him than I normally would have done. There were a lot of times that I felt bothered or put out by the things he needed. I felt overburdened. But I look back now, and I'm grateful that I have that time with him. I definitely felt more compassion and love for him. And he was always so appreciative to me. He would thank me every time I helped him. And a few months after he was released from the hospital, I was visiting, I would visit him every day on my way home from work. And there were a couple times when I stopped and he was more emotional than I've probably ever seen him. And he testified to me of the atonement, the pain that he was going through. And he marveled at how the Savior bore that pain along with the rest of the pain that everyone will ultimately go through. Having him bear that testimony to me in his final days is something I'll always remember. I'm grateful that just a few days before he passed, I was able to do a window visit with him. And I'm grateful for the time I've had with him and look forward to when we'll be together again soon.
So since I'm the oldest grandchild, I will start the memories section. So if anybody else has memories that you can come up after me and share about Grandpa. So the one that I wanted to share. Maybe. <laughs> so when I was nine years old, Grandpa took me and Laura to music of the spoken word. But after that, we get up. I'm not a cracker either, so. <laughs> um, so, after that, he took us to a sacred meeting on Temple Square. And, because um, he was there, and so was Elder Frost. I didn't know that until I read his journals yesterday. Um, and at the end, we were, we all stood up as the, pres the prophet left, and I was able to shake his hand. Um, and it was just a really special experience for me. So, we'll miss you, Grandpa, and we love you. Um, the one thing I think about when I think of Grandpa is every time we'd go to Las Vegas, which wasn't that often, but we'd always stop in Henderson <laughs> as we <laughs> childhood vacations. We would always stop in Henderson at his house, and I came to love that. He would make us coffee jokes every time, oh, and it was fun going there to see him. I love that about our vacations. One thing I remember about Grandpa is about a year and a half ago, he came for Josh's farewell, and me and my fiance had the pleasure of picking him up from the hotel, and it was hard. He couldn't get around very well, and uh, we had to help him into the car and open the door, and then help him walk up to the movie theater, and then also he would always make the journey to Washington to come see me play sports. And we love you, Grandpa, and we miss you. Um, we don't really have like a specific memory, but like in when we saw him in Vegas, like Cassidy said, he would have this little nunchuck, chipmunk thing, mouse thing that would always sing. Kung Fu fighting, so we thought that was pretty fun. And then on the um, on our birthdays, he would always send us like a packet of like one dollar bills, but there would be like twenty in there. Anyways, I was I was the McDonald's. Oh yeah, and the McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, the McDonald's one. Twenty dollars. Well, I just yeah, there's like one dollar. Oh yeah, one dollar. Yeah, the one dollar packets. Anyways, that was fun. So. Right, my memory was probably how he always quizzed me on sports trivia. I always thought I could uh, outsmart my guess because I was smarter than me, he always knew more than me, but I tried to get the one more. Took me to my first hockey game. Got to see a, go see the Grizzlies play, and one of the players flipped a puck over the glass, and we got to keep it. That was cool. Um, I think probably my first memory of Grandpa. We had stopped in. I think he was living in Henderson at the time. I could have been more than like five or six, but. Um, I had just barely started playing piano, and I think I think Karen was helping me play something, but I was just like plucking out some notes. But he was like coming along and singing, and I just I don't know. I just remember that, and that was like 
the first time I felt like I could actually play, you know, because I had just barely started, but I think that's probably my favorite memory. Please 
Okay. Now it will be favored to have a video tribute that was prepared by Kyle Weiser. <laughs> Why? Kylie. <laughs> Kylie, sorry. <laughs> See, that's what you get when you uh, ask a person with dyslexia to uh, <laughs> conduct the meeting. Sorry about that. I skip one, I get the name wrong. <laughs> sorry about that, Kylie. If you'll just give them one moment to get set up here for those watching via Zoom and Yeah. 
face a world of strangers where I don't belong and let it strong It's a nice cloud that there's someone I can turn to
Thank you, Kylie, for putting that together. While they're resetting the cameras and getting everything set back um, for those on Zoom, I just wanted to share one little thought with you. It's actually a poem um, by Henry Van Dyke. It's called Gone From My, From My Sight. He starts out, I'm standing on a seashore, a, sh a ship at my side, spreads his white sails to, move, to the moving breeze and starts for the blue ocean. He is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch him until at length he hangs like a speck of a white cloud just where the sea and sky comes to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there, he is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight. That is all. He is just as large and massed, whole and spar as he was when he left my side. He is just as able to bear his load of living freight to his destined port. His diminished size is in me, not in him. And just at the moment when someone says, there, he is gone, there are other eyes watching, coming at, coming, watching him coming, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here he comes, and that is dying. Although we, we mourn his passing and his loss today, we celebrate the fact that he lives on, that his life continues, right? And his legacy continues in each of you as you celebrate his life and remember him and carry on his legacy. And know that once again, you also will have that glorious reunion when he will be standing there, taking up the glad shout. Here they come. I bear you my testimony that I know Jesus is the Christ and that through him we will all return together to be one big family again. I humbly say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well now, close with the closing song, Each Life That Touches Ours for Good. Following that, we will have the benediction by John Hinsey.
Our kind Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we can be gathered here together to celebrate the life of Rome, Cantera, who we know as uh, father and grandpa and friend. We're grateful for all of the ways that he's influenced our lives, and we're grateful for the atonement of our Savior who has made it possible for us to be with him again. And we pray that we can have the comfort of the Spirit as we continue to remember and reflect on his life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.